streaming from Accra. Guide Radio. The new wave. wave. Hello, this is Lady Pelos and you're listening to The Guide Radio, the new wave. And today I'm joined by two very interesting guests, um, two people known in their own areas for different and, and very creative things. And I'm just really excited, to be honest. So I'm just going to, without further ado, let them introduce themselves. Over here we have... PJ Kev, also known as Calvin Mensa, um, born and raised in New York, based in L.A., um, I've been in a private jet space for about six years now, so I handle all private jets for all high-end celebrities worldwide. Oh my goodness! I mean, if that isn't if that isn't luxury itself, I don't really know what is. <laughs> and over on the other side, looking very cool indeed, we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I go by the name Stone Boy. Yeah, reggae dancer, international superstar, born in Ghana. See. Um, entrepreneur on the side, and um, and uh, and, and first, and, uh, above it all, human being, you know. So I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really that was a really cool intro because usually, I mean, every we all know we're human beings, but no one's about to announce that they're all saying <laughs> that itself. Um, so you guys, how has it been this Christmas period? Just gone. Um, it's it's been quite mad actually. There's been a lot of things going on in Ghana, and uh, so Kelvin, what's been happening? Um, a lot of things are happening in December. Um, came out here like around the 23rd or 24th, I think. Um, I had to miss a couple flights. Um, I was busy down in Miami and in New York, doing a couple things with my company and some clients. But um, this December we kicked it off with um, a lot of projects. I mean, I had I had a party called Champagne Campaign that was at Sun City. That was a real, real good success for me and my team. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we went to Afrochella. That was dope. Um, I actually know the founders of Afrochella. Yeah. Um, Seen a lot of good performance. Stone killed it. You did your thing. And then a lot of people uh, sold sold out and did this thing. And then um, I hosted Dirty Rave with uh, Mr. Easy. Okay. I think that that was a dope experience as well for me because um, it was something new. Um, as far as when it comes to entertainment. I mean, I've been hosting a couple of events before, but that one was a little bit different because it was more like a rave and it was just like artists coming in and out and that was pretty dope. Um, so I did my thing on that and then I still kicked it off with a send-off party with my my brother Kwam and Daz and we, we had a party at La Villa Boutique and that was real, real upscale. It was dope. So, and now it's just back to business for me. Wow. I'm not even, you know, playing around no more. It's just... Yeah. I mean, Christmas period is over, all that relaxation. Yeah. Well, did you really relax? It doesn't sound like you did. You, It sounded like you basically party throughout yeah, the entire I was season. Fun. I came here to have some fun. So I had some fun with the people and then, yeah. you know, gave back. I did a lot of giving back too. So it was fun. Okay. Stoneboy, what's been happening this season? Just the <coughs> December gone past. There's a lot yeah, of events um, went down. Lots and lots of events. And uh, you know when, when you're putting in the work and... You know, you're, uh, you're, you're like you're everywhere and the people love you and you love the people for that fact you put in creativity to represent for the people in December, which is literally Africa summer. It's, it's There's always yeah. summer in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but sure. December is like another reason or more reason to be about. So every day of December, you, you, you find out that people do parties, people do events, people do shows. Yeah. And I also happen to have one of my headline shows that always happen in December, which is the BIM concert. Yeah, and okay. this year was the third one. Oh wow! It was crazy. I think it's the big. It was it's the biggest. It's like um, fifteen thousand people c- capacity. Fifteen thousand. Wow. Yeah, wow. at the wow. Fantasy Dome. You know what I mean, there's no other big capacity indoor. Yeah. In Accra or in Ghana, except the Fantasy Dome, which I build up on the 28th okay. of December. Yeah. Yeah, man. So December has been huge as well, you know? And I did like, one night I had to do on the 29th, I had to do like three, three, um, three shows in a night. Three shows? Not in the same place, like in three different regions. How? Like, I mean, like, wow. for instance, like, I don't know, it's by drive, but I did Accra, I did Swedru, and then I did Kweu. 
Wow. So all these ones have like at least two hours. Two hour drive yeah, that's in crazy. between. And they're that's all in crazy. different places. That's when you I mean you step it up. Yeah. Know? But when you want to go by by the rules, you should be driving between two and a half or three maximum. So December has been really great and uh, and I dropped yet another single featuring me, Medical Dark Vibes. Yeah. And um 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 Kelvin Boy and um um Kwesi Arthur and that's like the biggest song right now in Yeah, Ghana. yeah, yeah. I mean, Hearing it it's everywhere. Called, called Ke -ke. Yes. You know, yeah. <laughs> jam, big jam. So yeah, man. Before December, I've been putting. I mean, I've I've have to be up on the work. Mm. I've I've have to be up and doing many things. And this year has had me. I mean, last year did too much. Did too many things. Broke so many records. You know? mm, yeah, this yeah, year yeah. it's not gonna be different. Yeah. It's going to be bigger and better. Like last year, we did a lot of events outside the country. Did summer jam. Did reggae some fest. Did, yeah. You know, represented for the country proper. You know. You know what I mean and pushed it, pushed, you know, break barriers and inspired a lot of people the same way, so. Wow, I mean... It was a great year last year and this year is looking greater. Yeah, so so in that sense, then I guess, what is your, I guess, your vision for uh, pushing Ghana um, international, interna yeah, internationally man, this year? that's a good one. Um, my vision, you see, it all has to do with actions because we've been hearing a lot of talks over the years, you know, talks that we will be told, some of the talks that we tell ourselves, some of the talks that we share with people. But, I mean, a single step towards action is, 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 is worth it more than the talks. Yeah. So for me, everything that I've dreamt of, every vision that I've had on my mind, I make sure that I walk towards it. Which, when, I mean, this is the first month of the new year, but over the last year, I made sure that I, I stepped up to the things there. I mean, there are collaborations that I wanted to do in order to get Ghana out there because whatever I do as an entertainer, I'm like an, 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 like an ambassador mm, for yeah. my country, Yeah. you know? So I did a couple collaborations, did a lot of, a lot of movements that actually sold Ghana and myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, on all these platforms, which I think are the steps to take mm. to push the agenda, to sell the Ghanaian agenda, to expose what we have here as Ghanaian. Yeah, you know, when it comes to the arts, yeah, yeah. and culture. That's I mean? interesting, yeah. uh, Kelvin. What's your take on this? I guess in, um, in this industry. Well, this industry right now for um, entertainers. I mean, what I experience uh, is that me coming back. I like the the, the quality of music here. But I think they still need a, like a little bit more push and need need more help with marketing. Um, I was telling like another artist I was talking to for Afrochella, and I was asking him like, you know, like you got good, you got real good music, but why you don't like try to target outside of Africa? Mm. You know what I mean? And he was just like, well, yeah, talk to my manager about it. It's something that we plan on doing it, and you know, plan on. But I think here it's a lack of um, knowledge. I think a little bit of knowing how to market yourself okay. and brand yourself two yeah. different things um but um yeah i mean i'm i'm all for it i mean any help that i, I tell any artist now any help that i can do and pushing the, the culture forward and and any connections that i got you know you got them too because i'm i represent the culture as well and um right now i just want to figure out you know how can we make something happen where I could bring in an international act, they can, and the international act can basically partner with, with you know, uh, a Ghanaian artist and do a collaboration together. It's like, I love to hear Meek Mills on a Stone Boy record. I love yeah, to hear, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love to hear uh, uh, Ella on a Stone Boy record. You know what I mean? I love to hear people like that on these type of instruments and beats and, and, and seeing where they could yeah. go with it. Like... That really, you know, and it helps them out too. Don't don't get it wrong. Like, you know, I was telling Meek the other day, I'm like, listen, you have no idea what Africa could do for you. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It can make you bigger than ever. Yeah. And you know what I mean? I was I be telling all this all day, like, even my country alone is twenty plus million. That's not even stepping into Nigeria, stepping into South Africa yeah. and all other places that we have here. So I think it's just all about bridging the gap and um I just want to be that person, that yeah. person that's going to bridge the gap from the international to my Ghanaian artist. Okay. 
Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so we're going to talk more about bridging mm-hmm. this gap in a moment. We're going to just go for a quick break. But we'll, mm-hmm. be right, we'll be right back with you guys soon as we just talk more about, um, you know, this industry and how best to push Ghana out into the world. So we'll be putting, we'll be right back with you guys very, very soon. Stay tuned. This is The Guide Radio and I'm Lady Plus. Streaming from Accra. Guide Radio. The new wave. wave. You're listening to the new wave, the guide radio. My name is Lady Pelos, and I'm here with Stoneboy and Kelvin. So, we were just talking about bridging this gap between um, Ghana and you know the world, especially on this on the music stage. And what's interesting is that, Kelvin, I know that you actually grew up, you know, sort of in this the music scene in itself. Um, so I want to know from your understanding what it was, what's the music like world like where you were growing up as you were growing up you grew, you grew up in the Bronx right? grew up in the Bronx yeah yeah and and from that and to how can how does it mirror? I, um, I grew up in the 90s yeah. so um, I grew up in the, the Puff Daddy era the, uh, the Mace era mm-hmm. um, the B.I.G. a little bit of B.I.G. and um, it was it was more emphasized on music videos because we didn't have social media back then and there um, so we, we used to always look at the music videos yeah and like just like damn, I, they they living a good life, damn it. <laughs> but now I think um, actually when I moved back to like LA and been coming back and forth to Africa for the past four years now, it's more like um, it's more about like you hear a record and like you you, you start bumping the record and you start streaming it mm-hmm. and then you go watch the video. You okay. get what I'm saying? Like yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more the other way around. Yeah. But before we grew up on like just watching the video first. Yeah. We didn't have the the luxury of streaming a, a song and we didn't have that luxury when I grew up. Um but but right now when I when I talk about bridging the gap, I think um, you know, just just me being honest, I like I don't hear as many Ghanaian artists in 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 LA. I just don't. I hear a lot of Nigerian artists. Really? Yeah. But but and that and that's and that's just I think because not not saying they got better music or anything than us, but I just think we need to just push harder and get get there. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's all about a matter of time before we get there. But um, I I think that right now um, you know that's where I start coming in. That's that's where I find a little gap in and I think that's why I want to fill that gap in. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So, what do you think? Yeah. Literally, that's um, that's a thing to talk about. It's a, it's a very important um, topic to speak on because everywhere you go, you find out that it is always like a comp- it's not like a competition, but you realize that I do not see it as a as a competition mm-hmm. the way it's it's, it's, it's seen. That's, I mean, like he said, you find out that there are a lot of things that we inspire as people of Ghana and people from Ghana. And then a lot of people pick it up. Mm. We inspire that. Mm. See, that's what I'm saying. We're known to be a country of people that inspires, sparks the mindset. Yeah. Or spark the brains to do certain things, but we, 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 we don't end up being the ones that get popularly known for it. Right. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure there's examples. Is it like the Ozonto? Zin? Yeah. Was... To be honest, yeah. to set the record straight, I'm, I've am i been a Ghanaian for 30, 30 years now. <laughs> <laughs> You've been? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. yeah. yeah. But at least I'm a Ghanaian before a long time. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Reading my history and checking with things and how things are going on. Like, you know, there's nothing new on this earth. It's only the way they're redone or the way they're done. Yeah. And check, you have to check out, you know, most of these, in, in most of this situation, we would have to, as people, n- understand ourselves, understand the levels on which we are, understand the roles we play to be able to be comfortable. Else we would always find ourselves wanting and misplacing priorities. Mm-hmm. Ghana has, I mean, Ghana is just, is the gateway to Africa. Regardless of whatever it is, we might not be playing as much as we were supposed to or yeah. we will want to in America. Yeah. But to me, it doesn't hurt me. Okay. Do you know why I want to drop some points? And I'm happy that he has found the loophole where he feels like, yo, what am I doing? Like, I can play a role in this to yeah, make yeah. it happen. Yeah. First and foremost, we need a lot more of our people out there okay. to get involved. 
Mm. Like he's starting to get involved like two, three years ago. Mm. But before then, you were who you were and never really thought that, saw the need to get involved. Mm. Yeah. But I believe that the Nigerians, the Nigerians having people like you and other persons who found themselves in places where they feel like, yo, what can we actually do? They mm. have had the, the wake up call years ago to start helping and aiding for years. Mm. I also even think when it comes to both countries, Ghana is older than Nigeria. Okay. What, historic, or in terms of development? And, mm. Oh, and independence. Yeah, you're right. And it's always going to be like after independence, then you know what's going on. Then mm. you yeah. begin to build your country. So we see it as that. And it's Ghana. Mm. So in a lot of ways, we've seen the light and we've inspired the light. But some of the setbacks is that either we feel too complacent or we're like, it's all right, we're done enough, or mm-hmm. most of the people. But to be honest, I believe and I speak for the artists and I speak for the creatives that we have been able to keep the fire burning. You see, all these Afrobeat fire begun in Ghana years ago. Mm-hmm. And the one name that is known for this universally and even more, they say, is Fela Kuti, right? Because yeah. he was popularly known for it. Yeah. Not necessarily mm-hmm. one who is the grandmaster or founding father yeah he's just put, he's of the Afrobeat yeah. sound but when you trace it down you find out that the grandmasters of that same Afrobeat sound that we have today are Ghanaian mm. that's interesting you find yeah. you find some of them old school old names because Fela had to come to Ghana too I'm bigging him up I'm not trying to take credits away from him mm. the truth is he got popularly known for it but that's why I come in and I say that we as Ghanaians would always be the ones to spark the minds or be a part of the foundation. But mm. that is never spoken of. But I believe that one thing that we have to change is to speak of our involvement at whatever level it is. We don't have to be popularly known for it mm. necessarily because everybody's going to play their roles now. But now, I hope I'm making some sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now when... Now that we feel the need to equate the Nigerian spirit or the Nigerian heights out there, then it's the time. Yeah. So persons like PJ Kev can step in to throw a little ice in there. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? He's the only guy that I've seen around connecting all these American celebrities on that level. Yeah. And it's not a Nigerian. That's interesting. Yeah, it's true because I get what you're saying, especially there is a See, big of a disconnect. But but I trust that, even using him as an example, I don't know too much, but he knows the industry he is. I believe that if it's a yes, just let me be honest, it's just a guess. Mm-hmm. All these things, I I mean, sitting, look, looking from the outside, you could even be mistaken for a Nigerian more than a Ghanaian. Yeah, because people know that Nigerians have the guts. Yeah, for sure. They do the big shit. Vim, yeah, yeah. People ask, but like, I, I put it out there that I'm straight exactly. Ghanaian. Like, so, so, so you see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. for sure. Because it's like, it's like they don't, they don't expect a Ghanaian no, person yes. to like even do things I'm doing. Exactly. Like, That's I'm, really I'm into sad. like, yeah, no, it, serious. It, it, it's real I life. I don't know if it's sad or, or not, but it is. Yeah. So this also transcends yeah. into all the other aspects where we have been pioneers and have been the energy behind it and will never be thought about yeah. when it comes to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. Okay. I'm making it known now, though. Now it's like the flag is, <laughs> the flag is my mind. This is waving yeah. it about. I'm not telling everybody. So I, just, uh, you should, you, I hope you get my point. Yeah, I'm not just using, sure. using you as an example. Like, for all the work you put in and all the hustle you put in, mm-hmm. like, out of 10 black people, when they have to guess your nationality and they don't know, seven will go for Nigeria on your 100%. Head. Right, 100% right. But I wonder as well, because I was thinking about this before, if, you know, Ghanaian kids, like, let's talk about growing up and, yes. you Meanwhile, know... Meanwhile, the Azontos, the Afro... Remember the days of Azontos? Yeah, I mean, we were Azontos is the foundation of what we're all singing today. It's true. Pampa, Pampa, Joey B. Joey B is the first guy that I trust when Tonga came out, that that sound, yeah, mm. bang, bang, on, in today's Afrobeat is yeah. Joey B. So wow, yeah, yeah sure. And I and he, he did the official remix with me on that. Like we have it, you know what I mean? We easily 
one thing I feel is that we should celebrate ourselves enough and speak of the good things we've done enough as Ghanaians because mm. we hardly, we hardly we voice that. Yeah. And that's the fact. So running it back to the main point, if you feel like Nigerians are taking the bigger, bigger spots out there, I mean, I can't blame them. They are all representatives of Africa and West Africa. But I also know that amongst all of these things, us Ghanaians have been the foundation and will always be in a lot of spaces. Mm. also so we need to highlight on those things as well so that we all run together right you know yeah 100%. so nigerians getting known for it popularly Ghanaians getting known to be the foundation of it we all share the credit yeah yeah sure. <laughs> you know I mean? um calvin i want to ask and i think we were we were speaking about it earlier mm-hmm. um and i was saying that you know especially in the music industry in the, in the creative industry generally in ghana um, you know, a lot of kids, I guess, they grow up with this mindset that, you know, they have to go for a steady job, you know, a, as a lawyer or as a banker or something that's going to bring them money. I guess this is the, maybe the mindset that we've always, uh, it's a traditional mindset in a sense. And it's a systematic one, which means that a lot of people, I guess, wouldn't really put thought into the creative industry in itself. And I wonder if that's just kind of grown in that sense. People you know you, you go into it but there's not a lot of seriousness behind it because people still see that sector they still see that industry music be it music arts whatever as something that isn't very serious that shouldn't be you know put too much attention on yeah just to answer your question i'm breaking that barrier down like what i do is unheard of like for the typical entrepreneur to wake up and say Mommy, I want to go sell jets for a living. Like, yeah. that's unheard of, especially yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. So I'm breaking that barrier down. It, it's not typical, and I'm glad that I'm successful doing it because if I wasn't successful, I would have heard it from my Ghanaian parents. I would have heard it from everybody. You've you know what I mean? Whole family. Right. <laughs> but um, I think just to answer your question, what needs to happen now is needs to be more successful young entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like money solves a lot of problems. Like, sorry to say, it, it was the money that I was making that got my parents to be like, all right, he's good. And living where I'm living, like LA, where yeah. they yeah. know it's expensive, they know, you know, after a certain, it's like, all right, you, you kind of like doing it on your own. Yeah, because you take it seriously yeah, once you've seen the money. So yeah. I, think, I think money is, is the issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for the young average entrepreneur to understand that they don't need school and they need to take the risk and go start a business, even if they fail Mm -hmm. to continue moving on and keep going. It's kind of hard to change that for the adults, if that makes any sense, because the adult is the one that's depicting the kid's lifestyle. Yeah. Of typical, hey, I went to school, look at me, I got a job. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I got my big house. Well, even if they didn't go to school, they would still encourage their kids right. to go to school. Because, I mean, you do, you definitely need a level of education. Yeah. That, I agree. You need a certain level. Like, you can't just drop out at sixth grade and be like, I'm not going to school no more. You need, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You need yeah. to finish a certain level. Mm-hmm. But college, when it comes to going to university and college, I don't, I think that's when you're old enough to make a decision whether you're going to be serious on your business are you going to go to school future and, and you know, advance your education? Mm-hmm. And it, 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 it comes, like, throughout the whole board when it comes to entertainers, uh, you know, everything, just the whole board. Because, to be honest with you, there's a lot of money in, in entertainment right now. Like, it's probably, in America, I think is the number one genre right, genre right now is hip-hop. So, like, people are making millions and millions of dollars, especially with this new streaming thing platform yeah. that they have. And it's, it's, trust me, like, if you could afford my services and my jets, you, you're making some money. And I'm, I'm not the cheapest, you know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah. so. Do you see Ghana going in that direction as well? Because I wonder if we can get to like that level. Streaming or. Um, in terms of getting to that height, because, you getting know. Getting our revenues, yeah, making in terms money of off whatever we put out there. Exactly. All right, first and foremost, to touch on the education bit, you know, education is education. Education is to know, education is to read, to get educated, to get some form of information into your mind stream, to know about something. And that can definitely be acquired, not only theoretically, you know, not only by academia, mm-hmm. 
you know, life itself teaches us a lot, but we don't pay attention. You know what I That's mean? True. In every in every single step we take. To be honest, I I've learned so much, and I still learn from life, other than a lot of things, mm -hmm. because I do pay attention to those things, you know. And I got drawn to that out of experience, and I have now have to work with that type of mindset because I I realize that, you know, nature like 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 Dalai Lama once said, like he who thinks a lot, you know, needs no education mm. because when you think. You think so. You're, you're learning. Like when you think a lot, you think deep. Yeah. Sure. When I when when he says needs no education, it doesn't. You should you should understand. Like when you think a lot, like you begin to answer a lot of things. Like you think a lot, so you must be able to put things to know what and why, and that's where you you further on research by yourself. You further on because mind you, we're all living in life, and all these subjects that we're being taught must have been written by one man at a point in time mm. all these subjects all these whether it's whether it be radio whatever you want to learn must must have to come from humans at a point in time yeah and those humans have to sit and think mm. <laughs> that's true <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean yeah. Yeah, yeah. they weren't taught they have to sit and think they were nerds they were gifted they had wisdom and translated the wisdom into knowledge yeah mm. For us to also read, to know, to right. learn. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the on the part of education and what you want to do. So applying that to whatever you want to do, I think that, you know, you should actually find it from within. Okay. Like I'm a creative art. Yeah. I never learned how to sing music. Uh, I never, ever been to no music school. Mm. You just learned it. It just came to you. Everything came to you. Naturally, though. Some people but just like, like, how you, how did you, okay, like, okay. If you wanted to put a record and then I together. Get, yes, and then I get to understand what it is that I have within me. Then I have to, then I get to know it. Because I found it. Now I have to study what I found to know it. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes, so yes. if you don't find it within you, you can't study to know it. You can't get educated about it. It wouldn't go into the head. Mm. It doesn't have um, a, a receiver. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can read all you want, but it can't it can't connect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you need you need you need a receiver. You need a modem to have a Wi-Fi. You need to <laughs> put a true. password. Bring it, it down millennial wise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's not there, then you would waste a lot of time. Yeah. You as an entrepreneur, I don't know if you had to take time off to go and study about rent, about having a company to rent luxurious right. stuff did you have to no i just learned about aircrafts exactly yeah. yeah but you must have had the interest yeah because i wanted to travel my interest was i wanted to travel but i'm like Gosh. okay so you see where the interest started from i should from. have done that <laughs> i love to travel <laughs> exactly <too. laughs> but now see, i found some a way people to travel would, for free good yeah. and some people would never i mean wouldn't love to be like no i can't go on the jet i'm scared you know what i mean yeah. so just to speak a little bit about the education part and how we can grow whatever we find is just like that like you have to first and foremost find it you have mm -hmm. to find what you want to do yeah and then once it is there you can now know about it yeah and read about it because there's nothing i mean and nothing is new somebody may have felt the same way before because definitely so then they would leave their experiences behind that you can read Mm -hmm. Like all these success stories of all these books, all these steps and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. But, but then, we, I mean, on the education bits, but we can get there. We can get there. We can make money off our stuff. But we should check the environments that we find ourselves in. The mindset is different. I'm expected to, I mean, I'm expected to go around, look at it, I'm expected to, I mean, I just want to die it down so people know the mm -hmm. realities. The reasons why we're not going to, we, 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 we are crawling it's the mindset like we don't understand that we have to even stream music from people mm -hmm. from artists the majority the majority that? mindset don't know that they don't even understand that they don't see the need to wow like an american or so to say a foreigner would ask you yo where can i stream that song where can i buy it out of 10 Ghanaians, maybe only three would ask you where where they can buy the song Wow. Seven would be like, oh, can I have a CD? Do you have a CD? That's interesting. I mean, then I guess, how has your music um, 
finding a way to change people's mindset. Is it changing people's mindset in terms of yeah, how man. they understand about music and listen to music? Bless it. That then goes down to the material that you're putting in the music mm-hmm. because music is for the soul. Music goes through the soul mm-hmm. and the soul makes you leave. The soul is that factor that you that, that brings us alive. You know, so if music is a tool that relates to the soul, then you should know how deep it is that we have to be able to put in content that would change people, that would relate to people's mindsets, that yeah. would make them live literally. Yeah. You know, that that's on the side about how my music, how you have to make sure your music relates to people. So that yeah. depends on the content of the music. Yeah. Because you can continue to get people in a certain space without knowing that's what you're doing to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know, because yeah. because you you find a lot of people wanting to be like the you know, this hip hop artists that have all these tattoos and things on their faces. When you check half of their fan base, at least a quarter of their fan base must be looking like them. <laughs> yeah, at least so that I almost get it half? right. Say that again. You said almost half of the, the fan base looks like that. Okay. If you take a hundred of the diehard fans, at least 25 must be trying to look like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. So that shows you how music drives people. Yeah. And and, and, and puts them in a certain world, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And, a, and a, another quarter of the hundred might be on the way to be like them. Right. Because they consume them every day. Mm. See? But as to how to make, to get revenues to the extent where Mandem is talking about, I mean, it's the mindset, it's the marketing bit and all of that. Our people will have to understand that they have to, like, like it's a must. Like, you can't even want to ask for free music. Yeah, they have to you realize know. the value of the yes. music. Yeah. Thank you. So that is now growing up on them mm-hmm. by the help of people like myself, yeah. like a couple artists who don't mind to be bashed because we know that's what we were standing for. Yeah, okay. Did you get me? Yeah. We have to preach it and teach it that, listen, you have to, if you stream the music, then you actually support me. Mm, yeah. It's not about shouting my name in the streets. Yeah, true. God know I've got one of the biggest street credibilities in, in, in Ghana. Okay. Of quality standard, not just by the hype. Yeah. You know, and majority of these fans do support the music by learning and wanting to stream them and all of that but mm-hmm. let me ask again the phones and the apps that we use I mean so it's gonna grow but it's really on the low it's really on the low yeah because Spotify don't work here anyway yeah, yes, yeah it hurts. That's, so then but that's why we have after I'm the t- biggest selling artist on after yeah yeah so it is because of what I've been pushing and preaching yeah gradually yeah the problem. my album is the biggest selling album on Halftown till today mm-hmm. like the statistics well. show and on boom play as well my album topped the whole congratulations year congratulations on that artists in africa so mm-hmm. and i know that i've played a part in this as well to to say it not to feel like i, I do i wouldn't mind who comes at me because you know there's a thing going on that when people feel like when you're doing it for free then you're the right person for them to mess with Mm. Not like yo like yo he gives it out for free oh him is so good mm-hmm. but god knows that that's what we're selling that's what that that's how you can that's get your the revenue that's yeah. the business mm-hmm. so we have to get the people to understand the pride yeah in purchasing and supporting the music and that's where we can be able to get to these extent because yeah. ghana is definitely almost a 30 million people you know if not more because mm-hmm. the last time they read consensus was like a some years ago mm-hmm. you know what i mean and if two million of these people stream our music for 50 pesos times two million people that's a lot of math that's when i'm expected to go on the street and be throwing money yeah <laughs> <laughs> waiting for that day now anytime soon i mean that's when i'm expected that's when it's an obligation but as i speak to you now yeah. i don't go i don't come out of my house mm-hmm. and don't spend at least 100 cities in a day on mm. the street. Mm. Get me? Yeah. yeah. But that, that's, that's And the expectation is really high because this is Ghana, this is Africa, you see? We are compassionate, we are loving, we have soul. Yeah. Seeing? So we see a lot, That's you find a lot of, I mean, that's why you see us 
sometimes I hate to eat alone. I want to eat with four or three people. Let's put hands in that together. That's how we, that's our soul. That's how we grew up. Mm -hmm. So there's an obligation that once you see one of the family members do good, then everybody got to eat from that plate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's our culture sort of. So when Stoneboy drives by, everybody on the street is a lucky day. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But we have to also understand that, you know, for musicians, I'm not speaking for myself only. Those who can relate can relate. For us to get onto these levels of amassing some wealth yeah. to throw about, yeah. we need to get the sales up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And, and <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so much is expected of us. I'm sure. And I know and in that manner. Yeah. That's why I have a charity. I have you no know, I have a charitable foundation, the Livingston Foundation. And out of all these crawling sales, we still do a lot to, to give to, back. To give back. And you know what I mean? Kelvin does something quite similar in that sense too. You guys are having that that mindset is obviously then and it's interesting as well in that you share parallels, but more so just for you in the beginning you Mm. said that you you know like i said earlier that you delved into music a little bit and then you went into the jet setting business and i just want to understand i guess in that sense the steps that was taken like why did you decide to go down the head how did that even happen um i was in syracuse one day i woke up um and I don't know if it was I was reading something. I think I was reading something about traveling, and um, I was. It always amazed me to go places, like whether my friends wanted to go or I just wanted to go alone. But I always wanted to go places, mm-hmm. and I remember it was um, it was like summertime, and I was like, you know what? Like all my friends are spending their money on like clothes and this and this. I'm going to just spend my money on traveling to as many places as I can go. Yeah. And then I knew that, okay, I started traveling and then the cost started coming. My pockets started getting low. I came back to school, was dead broke. I was like, damn, but I went to Dallas, Texas. I was, you know what I mean? I was yeah. just going places. Yeah. I was like, all right, I need to do something where I can travel for free Travel, travel in luxury. <laughs> so literally, that was the mindset. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm just like, that's my mindset. I'm like, yeah, man, nah. be you're honest. Right. You're like, right. travel for free, travel in luxury. I travel for free, but on, I mean, luxuriously. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I was like, I started looking at jobs. So flight attendants came on. I was mm. looking at flight attendants. I was looking at, and then I was like, I, I seen like the jets and stuff, but I was like, I ain't got nobody that's gonna, you know what I mean? Then I went back to New York. It was a summertime in New York. And I met someone that actually owned a private jet company. So I was lucky to know people mm-hmm. that was pretty successful around me, I think I would say. Mm, it's um, about the people that surround you. Yeah. yeah. So by association, you, you, still, you see, you learn a lot and you achieve a lot. Yeah. yeah. So then I was Definitely. like, all right. So I started working for uh, the company. And I was like, well, like he started saying the prices. And I was like. 30,000, 20,000, 10,000. I said... That's just one way, right? One way. God. <laughs> wow. I'm like, uh, who the hell I know that's going to spend 30,000 to go from New York to LA? Then it started to wonder. I'm like, okay. The net worth for these people got to be over a mil. And I'm like, I was looking at my contacts. I was like, yo, I literally have nobody in here that's close to like all my people street boys you know what i mean like i ain't i didn't have nobody mm-hmm. that was gonna spend no thirty thousand when delta is online for three hundred dollars mm-hmm. it just wasn't the typical yeah you know it's amount right. so make a long story short um one of my close friends at the time was justin combs and how me and justin combs got connected was back then i used to do i had a song I tried music. I had a song <laughs> called. <laughs> you, you tried. You, see, you had to try to be a part of it. That's true. <laughs> I tried music. Yeah. It was a song called uh, "The Swag Is 5000. It was like more like a dancing record. Okay. Um, you could Google it, whatever. And all right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna check it out. We're gonna yeah. check it out. <laughs> so all I said was, yeah. was Kev like Kev Kev like I lock in with all my mic. That's all I said. That was all the, all that the was it. Wow. 
Um, as far as my verse. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Of course, it's a song, but my verse was that was that was it. Oh, yeah. man of little what? But I mean, you know, I, I tried music. Like I said, I, yeah. it took me forever to go lay that that. Right there, it took me forever. Oh On the beat, music is actually hard. Don't oh, listen. Yeah. I respect every artist. Like, it's not easy. Not an easy job. Mm-hmm. But um, so that record happened to like blow up, like in New York and like in the tri-state area of mm-hmm. the United States. It happened. I mean, and across the across the country, but it wasn't too too big. But it was big. But um, from that, it's crazy because when you when you make music, good music, a lot of people start to draw closer to you. Mm. So when you talk about the soul and I can just imagine how like the young kids felt. They like knowing me felt like a part. I don't know. It was just crazy. Yeah. And it was like a dancing record, so it was like a feel good uh, song. Yeah. But um, so make a long story short, um, uh, one of my uh, close friends, Webstar, he actually introduced me to Justin Combs, and once we met, we clicked, and that happened to be Diddy's son. Um, so. Um, happened to be when I was starting up the private jet business and... How old was... How old were you then? I was thinking I was like 18, 19. 18 to like... 18, 19. I think around Gosh. that age. 18, 19, or 20. Around that age. Yeah. Um, so, um, I remember going back to school and I was broke and I was like, well, um... I was studying business. That's the thing. I was studying business and I went to go ask my professor, have you ever owned a business? And he said, no. So I'm like, this guy is teaching me business, but never owned his own business. It didn't make, it, it didn't make really, any sense to me. That's really ironic and kind of... Yeah, it was kind of that. crazy. Yeah. So it didn't make any sense to me. So I'm like, all right, I don't think I need to be here no more. I just made a decision. But I got Ghanaian parents, so you can't forget. They all about school, yes. school, books, books, school, school, books, books. So <laughs> that's what they're about. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I took, I did, I did something slick. I took a loan out and saying told my parents that I was going to school, but I actually took that money. It was seven thousand dollars. I actually took that money, went to New York, and told my mom that I'm moving schools to and like I'm transferring schools to go to LA. <laughs> to so this story, she she she, she understands it now. Like, she understands, I told, yeah. but at that time she was gonna. Nah, she was like, oh, okay, so you moving to LA, you going to school out there. She's like, why oh, you don't just stay in Syracuse? You know, I'm like, ma, it's too expensive. You know, you know, I started making up all kinds of stuff like. Oh my but God. I knew that if I traveled with Justin Combs yeah. and I was being around, like, you know, of course, like, he was introduced me to so many people and I was being around his association that I could do this jet business. Mm. That was my mindset. Yeah. But... That was a strategy. Yeah, that was a strategy. But it didn't go as planned. I moved to L.A. Uh, my brother's already out there, so I moved to L.A. The first six to eight months, I was broke. LA is so expensive. LA is, is a different ball game. You need, man. I mean, to live a lifestyle that you comfortable, you need you need some money, a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, that wasn't the plan. So it took me a year and a half to book my first client. So it's a year and a half of you just being broke. Yeah, I'm being broke, finessing. Uh, what we call finessing is just like selling anything that you get your hands on. Wow. That's like finessing. You were hustling. I was hustling. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was doing that. I was even selling uh, life insurance. No, not life insurance. You were uh, selling life insurance. No, not life insurance. <laughs> it was, it was uh, legal shield. It was um, legal insurance. Don't tell me. So, were you knocking on people's doors? And, nah, I was just doing internet marketing and okay. like, it's it it crazy. <sighs> but... Um, yeah, that was just the days. But anyway, um, so yeah, so it took me a year and a half. My first client was French Montana, and that's when French was dating Chloe. And um, from there, it took off. But I messed up on this plane like four or five times. But from there, it took off. You messed up on there? On his jet, yeah, like four or five times. I was just starting off. I didn't know. I in, was, in what sense? I just so like he ordered a bigger jet. I gave him a smaller jet. Uh, um, one time, the, like he told me what airport he was going to. I put him in a whole other airport. They had to drive an hour away to the airport. Yeah. Oh, Things no. happen. Like, yeah. This plane stuff is, is crazy. But thank God for people around him that believed in me. Um, like my one of my best friends now, Zoe, she believed in me, believed in the idea, was always, you know, consulting me. People like Justin have been by my side for life. Like, he been telling me, like, yo, keep going. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And, Look at me now. I did 102 jets last year. Wow. 
Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it, it all comes down, um, I guess, to not only believing in yourself, but also having the right people around you. And I've been hearing that obviously a lot, especially 2019. You've got to have that mindset and mind frame to surround yourself with people that can take you further as opposed to people that may will, will bring you down in that sense and we're going to be talking more about that in a moment but we're just going to go on a quick break you're still listening to the guide radio and we're getting a lot of wisdom here i don't know if you're writing it down but i'm just my memory is terrible but i'm still trying to remember everything that's said i need to be you know a millionaire by the end of this <laughs> conversation uh so we're just gonna have a quick break and we'll be right back with you very soon streaming from Accra. guide radio the new way, 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 Just in case you've forgotten, and this is one of my many podcast sessions. I'm here with Stoneboy and with Kelvin, and we're just talking about, you know, uh, Ghana and taking it beyond the waters that it is and now, taking the music industry to a different level. And um, onto that, I guess the next question sliding in would be how you know what are we going to see between you guys in the future what what are um what are the plans the vision moving forward mm-hmm. um you know stoneboy and you and kelvin working together what's been yeah man discussed? Um, come on man this is a great um this year is going to be greater like you know and i believe that because we're going to put in a lot of work we're going to see a lot of avenues where we can fill in the holes you know and me and PJ Kev and others, not just the two of us, you know, we have a lot to do. And there are a lot of um, virgin grounds to to, to poke, mm. you know, to, I mean, to, to go into. Like, he has the links to what the world is, is looking at. Yeah. To be honest, the whole world looks at American industry. To be honest, the whole mm. world looks at the American industry. You know, forgetting that they have an industry to protect, to manage, to secure as well. Else, I mean, I think other people would have infiltrated it already Mm. and had their ways around it. Mm. But every industry has a set rules and whatsoever. But aside those, I know that every industry also wants to expand. Aside that individuals want to expand and individuals have different feeling and different love for what they do. So him bringing, so to say, Ghanaian artists, I'm streamlining it to Ghanaian artists because we need that kind of support, mm-hmm. you know, because more times you find out that, I mean, let me just cut it, Ghanaian artists to be specific, yeah. to cross over because that's also important, you know, and vice versa is going to be good for both, both, both sides, both sides. Yeah, whoever wishes to extend a hand to get some of the fans from here coming in and the love and I know ways, you know. Mm-hmm. And with him out there, I trust that we'll go far. Because for instance, we find out that um, Sakodia tried it one time to do a song with um, what's his name again? Um, that one that had locks. What's his name? One rapper. So, um... um. Uh, who was it? Ace Hood. Ace Hood. Ace Hood. Okay. to do a song with Ace Hood. Yeah. And you'd always realize how Sakade pushed the song over here and the things he had to go through playing by the rules of, of the, the stars, so yeah. so to say. And most often you find out that, I mean, I'm just raising a concern so you know. I know you know, mm-hmm. but that actually is a, is, 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 kills the whole vibe, you feel me? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't interest others to want to go through the same things anymore. Yeah. To get that happening. Only to say that sometimes you do too much. You know, you go all the way out and then they don't push the song on that mm. as well. So then what then is the outcome of you try to cross both of us? That, that wouldn't make any, any, any way. Mm. You know what I mean? And that is and has been the norm. I've seen my brothers from South Africa do songs with these people. And the song will get, probably, they expect the song to be big in, in those other places in Africa, but they wouldn't do nothing to push it where they are. Yeah. Mm. So to give the other African artists their shine in their space. Yeah. So that's a concern and a question mm. as well. And I want to let you know that has been one of the deterring factors 
that wouldn't allow us to. I mean it. You do know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And they, I mean, number of times I've gotten some requests from, and I'm, I, I told the person point blank. You see me? I don't do music like that. Okay. Somebody said, oh, I have a, we have verses from Lil Wayne. We have verses from, yeah, they're selling the verses. I'm like, yeah, I'm mad. Me by verse. <laughs> <laughs> the things are chatting. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, somebody would jump on and be like, oh, how much is the verse? Because they want to have Lil Wayne on the song or they want to have somebody no, on, on the song. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't even begin there. From there, you know, it has to be... A mutual thing where we all get to an understanding that even if I'm going to buy your verse, you have to push the song in your space. Mm. Mm-hmm. I agree with him 100%. I think, um, but just to, just to fall back on what you said, I think so many artists right now understand the importance of Africa. And they want to come in exactly, exactly because we had to stick into our own place and make it look how they always yeah. know how to be so that... So, well, they know that, yeah, we have the... I mean, we're good over here as well. Mm-hmm. Like, like, the people... The people that I've been talking to, a lot of them, like, they all mention Africa. Like, I mean, you, you see you see it in, you know, for example, with the Drake and Whiskey song. That was his biggest... One of his biggest records to date. Yeah. Because, Af- because the African like, people jumped onto it. To date, though. And showed him love. Like... Mm-hmm. Plus his own people over there. Yeah. Just because and he, he had whiskey with him. Mm. He, pushed he pushed it, it too. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that wasn't, that was both sides. Just, so imagine if more artists do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what he's saying is 100% true. Like, it's not that they can't get a song with an artist. They probably could. But for me, this is what I like. I like when the vibe is right. Like, I like exactly. being in the studio with him and an artist. And they create them. You know what I mean? I like that. Like, that's the vibe. And I'm, yo, nah, this is it. Nah, this ain't it. You know what I mean? Like, like, I like creating a vibe. And that's what I want to do. Like, I want to create culture classes and culture vibes. Like, you know, Stoneboy come in there. He play his Afro beats. Whatever. You know, Lil Baby come in there. He play his beats. Mm-hmm. He be like, all right, how can we bridge the gap together? And that's what I talk about bridging the gap together. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Putting both sides together and making a dope record. Yeah. And I think right now, um, the timing is right. You know what I mean? The timing is right for it right now. That's- why, why is it conducive to what is the time? Why is this the time, the right time? Um, um, because right because of the light Africa is getting right now, it's, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, this past why December, do you think Africa is getting that light though? Um, because first and, of and both, where is Africa getting that light from? Because you live you live yeah, in a state where well, you can see it from your, your well. Your, I think your I think I think because it's, it's a new sound for them. It's a new sound that people want to tap into, and I think. Um, they understand population and they understand sales in the in, in America. They understand the power of numbers. And Africa is is definitely populated okay. more than North America. Exactly. So they understand and South the power. America probably put together would only come close. When, or the the difference wouldn't be that much. Yeah. Exactly. So and the time is right because they understand that we really have dope dope music. That's like that's a fact. They understand that our music is like touches people so yeah Afri- dance. i mean african music has always been the foundation of all these general music True. from the r&b to the hip-hop it was a jamaican who actually started this hip-hop thing. it is it is check it out bro. i know check it out because learning all these new things yeah. check it out. there's a jamaican who started to vibe and do the rap thing and it became a rap rap hip-hop whenever it is Everything has a beginning. We just wow. have to check. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right. Now he's right. And all these things actually are rooted into Africa, mm-hmm. literally. So when did Africa now become the hub that they want to come to, uh, that the world wants to seek from? Mm-hmm. The world has always sought for Africa, mm-hmm. and don't give it its credit. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. So when you say that Africa is a new light, I'm wondering where the light is coming from now to make it a new light. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. I mean, say, it's just, we're yeah. just vibing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'll go deeper to ask, okay, so where from this light all of a sudden? 
I think it's the 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 fact that um, they and I want to just correct the fact that every soul knows that Africa has been the light and shall forever remain the light. Yeah, the light is not coming from anywhere. The light is not coming all of a sudden. The light has been, but it's just because that now time is coming where. The children of Africa are rising up more and more and realizing their own worth and, and propagating their worth. So you have to join the crew. Mm. Mm. That's, yeah. 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 I definitely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Give us another 30 more years. We 30 more years? You think that long even? Just to say. I mean, yeah. Maybe, maybe five, give us another five, five more years. Five years. I no. say five. Because I say how, five long, years. how long has it been since... I mean, they just started seeing African artists roll like they roll. Yeah. So they can be like, hey, yo, what's up? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> no, but it's, I guess it's true in that sense. You know, Africa, we've, it's been there. Exactly. We've had yeah, everything exactly. there. So I, I, I mean, I'm adding up to your point and I would only say yeah. that it is, if, it, if the, the time is only right that they're now, some people are awakening, the spirit of our, our people are awakening more and more. To realize that yeah we want to do stuff with our people mm-hmm. and you can mention the number of people who want to do stuff now with the africans out of 10 people seven are black mm. he's right yeah, he's a boy. keep mentioning diddy diddy he's not a white man yeah jay-z jay-z's not a white man keep mentioning out Me? of 10 you see seven black men. yeah a lot of going you DJ Khaled, uh, spoke to by Switch. Yeah. He, he's right. He's, he, yeah, I'm just thinking about that. I'm just thinking about it. You got it. I'm just thinking about everybody that I spoke to about Africa. So, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, that's just there, and I had to chip in that point so we know where we're all driving at. Yeah. So it's not all of a sudden, it's been. We're just waking up more and more. I guess we're just waking up, but. I woke up a lot of people, though. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, so I, you see, that's, that's the point. Yeah. I woke up a that's lot of people. That's actually what you did and yeah. have been doing and are still going to continue to do. Yeah. Yeah. So then the credit doesn't go to all of a sudden. Credit goes to you. Be part of it. Yeah. I woke up a lot you of people. You are part of it. To be honest with you. Because <laughs> my, my involvement right now, I mean, I could say as far as the youth goes, my opinion right now when exactly. it comes to the youth is, is and now you're gonna even get bigger than this because now you're gonna actually be like yo you're gonna connect a lot of dots now yeah and i'm happy about that and to be to be honest i'm happier that you're gonna i mean i'm that biased I mean that, <laughs> that, that's a nice thing to no no but i'm just saying it's to just, be honest when yeah. he makes sense is because because like i like you saying it like People really at the at the the beginning stage just thought I was Nigerian or thought I was coming from another country. Like this this is never yes, heard of. And you couldn't loud it up because I think that a part of your mind will be like you you somebody will come at you and say you're trying to be like hey. Exactly. But you have to accept, love, yeah. promote, speak it out that you're a Ghanaian. Yeah. Let the Nigerian be proud that they're Nigerian. Mm-hmm. But both of us are going to be proud eventually that we're all African. Exactly. That's a good point there. And, okay, this is... Whew. I yes. think we need more time, but we, we're, <laughs> we're pressed for time. But still, I, 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 there's so many things that you both are doing individually, and I just want to find out, um, you know, what organizations you're a part of, what things you're working on, yes. you know, where... People can find out more and get into not just yeah. um, the jet setting and not just the music, yeah. but there's the different aspects. So, yeah. you know, uh, Strainbow or whoever I wants mean, to... I mean, it's that simple. Um, social media has done a lot to us. PJ knows about it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely knows about that. Yeah. Social media has an office on its own. Yeah, know? that's for so, sure. Social you know? media. Let's, let's just keep it at social media because yeah, that's the uh, driving point. At where we at right now, we're at the millenniums. We're the millenniums. We're changing... Everything like yeah. I mean, um, even with this podcast, it'll be streamed, it'll be live, yeah. it'll be you know what I mean somewhere bigger than I can even think Absolutely. about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're the millennium, and we need to stick with um, we need to stick with the change. Change is actually good sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, it's it's yeah. okay to follow us on social media. It's okay yeah. to to support us on social media. Yeah, we actually uh, appreciate that. appreciate the Absolutely. love that, you know, that you're showing on social media. So, for me, it's that PJ Kev. It's simple. P 
PJKEV. Just follow my social media, mm-hmm. um, my websites, and everything that I do. Just support it and love it. You don't need to hate, actually. A lot of people, too, hit me up and say, I want to be a private jet broker. I want to do what you're doing. To be honest with you, my best advice is be yourself. Yeah. I think um, me being myself allowed me to become where I'm at now. Okay. Um, but if you want to follow what I do... Your foundation. Um, yeah, actually my foundation is coming up. Um, it's called the Mentor Foundation. Okay. I do a lot of street feeding. So this year, well, last year I started it um, in like Osu area and like uh, went to like by airport, a couple places. This year it actually became a little bit bigger because I brought Steph Landon with me and we fed over 200 kids in the street. Wow. Um, and this is like unheard of. Like, I, I mean, I'm doing it because I want to give back, but it's like nobody else has been doing this. And I'm like... What y'all been doing? You know what I mean? Like, what? I mean, it's okay to get back to orphanage and stuff like that, but I mean, it was just crazy. Like, like you be driving down in Ghana and people be just going up to your window. Yeah. So I decided not to give money, but to give food. Cause yeah. Those people haven't, you know what I mean? Even yeah. Eating so. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so your Instagram name again, just for everybody. Um, is at PJ Kev, P J K E V. And your foundation is Mensa. the Mensa Foundation. Yeah, awesome. I might change the name though. You okay, mm-hmm. well, stay tuned for that then. Yeah, um, stay much. thank you so much, lady on uh, PJ Kev. Yeah. It's a guide radio, the new wave. You can always find me on the social media and handles as well, like at Stone Boy with a B. Okay. No hyphen, no underscore. Stone Boy B. You know and. The information's out there. You can call, you can text, you can vibe. Yeah. We'll reach out to you. And um, we do music. You know, we enlighten people. Mm-hmm. We represent for Africa. Mm-hmm. We represent for only one race, which is a human race. But we accept that we are the black race. Okay. In mm-hmm. them oneness. So literally, we, our, the Livingston Foundation has been in for a while now. It's just an avenue that people can use me and I can use myself to give the little that I have. Yeah. You know, I don't have it all, but I believe that as we go and we get and we share, it makes a lot of sense, you know. But also I've wanted to advise that nobody ever has it all because we're all working Mm. towards a greater goal. So I believe that the little that we give should be appreciated because we're under no obligation whatsoever to because a lot of people are just used to collecting mm. and would always form a certain... I'm speaking from a deeper perspective. I'm not trying to bash nobody, but I know mm-hmm. this is where we live. You know what I mean? So we just hope that the little that we always do will be appreciated because we try and we want us all. And these people that we lend a hand to, we pray we know that they're going to use that. Mm-hmm to be like a stepping stone and one day also probably lend a hand to us yeah. or lend a hand to other people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we don't do this because we have it all. We yeah. do it because we realize that we don't have to have it all to give. See it? That is... Yeah, wow. Okay. So, guys, I, I mean, like I said, <laughs> I've been learning probably far too much and I don't have anything to write down anything, but I'm definitely going to have to listen to this again and I hope you guys are going to replay this many, many times. And that's yeah. that was very poignant, you, you know, always remembering where you are and always remembering to give back because at the end of the day, the luxury and the lifestyle is there, but we're all one human, we're all one race and we're Absolutely. all working together yeah. just to try and, you know, reach for the stars, reach for what we want, mm-hmm. reach for the dreams, for our dreams. And um, it's been such a great discussion wow this sure. has been really lovely and you know you guys make sure you continue listening to the guide radio and follow um kevin and stone boy on the um their, yeah, pro, their instagrams and also their foundations yeah, as man. well and i'm lady Pelos. you know this is the new wave make sure you you know contact us on all different social media twitter facebook yeah, all man. of that we're all you? there stay mm-hmm. tuned for more we'll be hearing from us very soon bless up guide radio Cheers, man. <laughs> Streaming from Accra. Guide Radio. The new wave. Wave.